He alone is immortal. It says those words. We're not immortal now okay. because we have. It also says no one has seen him. No one has seen the father but the son. So if you read the other verses okay. in the Bible, so once again, no one has seen the father but the son. So once again, is this passage talking about the son or the father? Yeah. All the way through the Bible, passage. No, no, this passage. This passage. God the father and God the no, this passage in particular. First Timothy six sixteen. Is it talking about the son or the father? It's talking about the fact that Jesus is at the side of the Father, unapproachable. unapproachable when he the says Christ. he alone is immortal, whom no man has seen or can see, that particular passage, <laughs> is it about the Father or the Son? If it's talking about no man ever having Don't tell me if, don't tell me if. This passage, whom is it talking about? I'm answering your question. Okay. It's talking about the fact that we cannot ever see the Father because only Jesus can see so the Father. So is that passage, that once again, so once again, light as well. in the immediate light once again, Father. once again, is that passage, Let's clarify it once and for all. That passage, he alone is immortal, whom no man has seen or can see. Is that, please stop interrupting, paper boy. That's very rude of you. He's asked okay? many questions. You see, no Muslims are interrupting. No Muslims are interrupting. I think it's only fair that if one person speaks to another person. Others just gets all. You can find someone else to speak to if you want to. I've made this clear many times. Okay? What, I, what I'm saying is that he says, he alone is immortal, whom no man has seen. Had people seen okay. Jesus? Yeah. People so, have seen is Jesus. that passage about Jesus or the Father? The passage is about the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ is resurrected and is sat at the right hand of the Father, who no man has seen, and is in an inapproachable light. So you're telling me he never approached the throne okay. of God the Father. So you're telling me that Jesus was not seen by anyone. No, I'm not saying that. So how can that really? That. Wait, wait. Once again, this is the third time I'm asking. Is that passage? He alone is immortal. Listen this time. He alone is immortal, whom no man had seen or can see. Is it about the son or the father? Can you see Jesus right now? You see, question with a question. Yeah, that's fine. I'll answer your question yeah. once you answer mine. This passage, is it about the father or the son? Please answer it's about sincerely. The about the? It's about the son. So Jesus had never been seen. I've said that already. I did answer that previously. What is that? I said answered your question previously. Which is what? It was about the, uh, that this passage is about God the Son. It says specifically. Okay. So Jesus never died, and Jesus was never seen by anyone. No, that's not true. Because I've addressed both of your points. I've addressed the fact that you haven't. Yes, I have. How? Because it says that he's immortal because he's already been through death, and in his like when he took on flesh, he died on the cross. He was resurrected. He has gone through mortality into immortality, and that is the promise that we have. When we trust in him. Do you see the contradictions in the terms, in, in the term, in the phrase you make? When you I'm said, answering your question. Can I also, without interrupting, I let you speak? Okay. You said he's immortal because he's been through death. Yes. The term death means what? He died. Yeah. Okay. So anyone who dies is called mortal or immortal. So he was mortal. He died. He rose again, and he is immortal. Okay. So in other words, you're telling me that God changed his nature from becoming immortal to mortal, dying by his own creation. And then become and then rising again from death. In other words, in other words, you're telling me that God can change his nature despite the fact that in the Bible, in the book of Malachi, in the chapter three, verse six, it clearly says that God doesn't change his nature. So you're telling me he became from immortal to mortal and then again immortal. No. It doesn't make sense but at all. At no point is he not God. Like you're assuming that when he died, he was no longer God and that he changed his nature. Yes. I am saying as soon as immortal becomes mortal i.e. he dies no let me finish the statement at least i know but like i've answered your question no you haven't yes, because have. you have contradicted yourself Just because you don't understand my okay, answer let me know when you finish I haven't no i have understood your answer very well however one thing you haven't realized is the contradiction in the statement you made you said he went through death yeah the term immortal in the english language I understand. You're doing it again while I'm talking and interrupting. I know, but you're reinforcing things. I'm not reinforcing anything. I'm looking at the definition based on the Bible and based on the English language as well. The term immortal means not subject to death, let alone for three days and three nights, not subject to death even for a microsecond, like the father. The father never ever died. No, he didn't. Good. And I didn't. The son, according to you, died on the cross for three days and three nights. Yes. Do you agree? So for three days and three nights, was he mortal or immortal? Well, he was obviously mortal. Thank you.